How bright is the future of digital marketing? We have a fantastic panel that has been lined up and to moderate this session for us is none other than Moses Kemi Barrow. He is the founder and CEO at Dot Savvy, an entrepreneurial digital and media marketing professional with over 15 years working experience in some of Africa's most successful internet companies, including the Perform Group, the company behind Gold.com, Inmobile, Naspas for Dillfish, known as OLX Kenya, Dot Survey Limited, Three Mice Interactive Media Limited, Africa Online, and Kenya Web Limited, formerly FormNet Online. His goals include participation in highly successful entrepreneurial and Pan African digital and mobile marketing business ventures over the next five years. He is strategic, he has a plan, and his goals are well aligned. He is the best fit to moderate this session. Welcome, Moses, and over to you as you take us through this session. Asante. Yes, good morning. Thank you so much, Ian. It's such a pleasure to be here today, and we are delighted to have this wonderful panel, uh, which will be giving us an opportunity to understand how bright is the future of digital marketing in Africa. We know for a fact that COVID-19 has really changed the complexion of how digital marketing is operating across the continent. Businesses have had a chance to go online in a really accelerated way and basically through digital marketing are finding ways to enhance their business improvements, looking at ways of generating sales and more importantly connecting to customers in new and unique ways. We've also seen the emergence of social audio platforms like Clubhouse and Twitter Spaces which are changing the landscape in terms of what we think social media is all about. We're also seeing short form video in platforms like TikTok and Instagram changing the way that we now market through these platforms. In our discussion today, we want to ask ourselves key questions about how is digital marketing being transformed across the continent? Uh, what are some of the next practices that we're seeing coming into this space? And of course, most importantly, uh, what should you do as a business organization to take advantage of the trends uh, that we're seeing coming into the future of digital marketing in Africa? So today we have a very exciting panel who will be with us to take us through some of the insights and areas uh, that are changing digital marketing from this perspective in Africa. I will be your moderator for this session. I would like to introduce uh, Sifel Sifo, Sifo, who's the, uh, uh, the lead for Meltwater today. Uh, we also have uh, Chris Bitty uh, representing um, Digital Brands Group. Uh, we have Caroline Kendi, uh, who's the head of brand and communications at Safaricom, and also Waidera Kabiru, an old friend of ours and somebody we've worked with in the industry for a long time, uh, head of media futures and digital at East African Brewers. Glory. So I'll start off with Sifo. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation you gave us a short while ago with Meltwater. Uh, Meltwater, as you've just presented, is an incredible platform uh, for providing social media insights and also online monitoring. Uh, you're able to sort of drill into the data that makes digital marketing work very effectively and helping brands manage their reputations online. From your perspective, what are the trends that you have seen going forward and also as a result of the pandemic when it comes to using these data insights and helping brands achieve uh, key outcomes uh, through digital marketing. Yeah. So thank you for having me, Moses. Um, great event so far. And I think to give some context around Maltwood as well, I mean, we were founded on the simple idea that companies could harness publicly available information uh, on the internet and gain competitive advantage in making a critical decision uh, uh, insights. So I guess now what we've seen um, over the last year in regards to the pandemic it's just a fast tracking and accelerated digital transformation across the board. Now, some of the trends that are highlights, just six quick points um, that I wanted to share is really around number one, um, the rise of social commerce. Uh, so I did allude in my presentation on data is the new oil. And this is really because people's experiences, journeys, purchasing habits online and opinions matter. Um, and there is a whole untapped market uh, that we are realizing and that we're identifying online. So that's one element. And then the second part is really around increasing um, digital ad spend. Now, digital transformation has also chipped away on the traditional brick and mortar customer experience and has given access to a new target audience for companies by fusing both social media and e-commerce without leaving your favorite social media channel. Now, this is absolutely amazing. Um, and if I give you context, in the South African uh, uh, country, we experienced a 90, well, I'd say during lockdown, um, where we had the restrictions, 90% of businesses only then understood the importance of having an online presence. Now, in the context of Kenya, um, what I've noticed in the last year 
is maybe an example uh, of a, a business that I've been working quite closely with, um, and this is really in reference to Dorsey Group. Um, we've all seen it. They launched an advert on TV, but went viral on social media. Now, what this should tell you immediately is there needs to be a shift in budget and a shift in focus in spending more money on uh, digital uh, purposes. And then there are other trends such as stories and short form video um, taking shape. And this really speaks to also, I guess, the, the importance of data across Africa. In South Africa, typically data costs between, you know, 1,100 Kelly shillings to 1,300 Kelly shillings for two gigs. But that is enough for a consumer to watch a three second uh, video, absorb the content, push to user generated content via TikTok or LinkedIn. And what we've seen early on um, in regards to YouTube, people are spending time absorbing videos. And this is where I feel um, uh, marketing is going to play a, a big role. Lastly, just wrapping it up with my points here, um, in terms of micro communities, I mean, in Nigeria and Ghana and in Kenya, you know, the, the average spend um, on uh, on social media is really uh, three and a half hours a day compared to the global spend of two and a half. So what we're seeing is a big focus and rise of social media influencers versus celebrities and also unification of data um, in regards to how we're obviously streamlining MarTech. But the need for purpose-driven marketing through data-driven decision is really the biggest trend that I'm seeing and the need to have a credible, trusted, you know, SaaS partner, um, especially during a time of crisis, is imperative. I've said a lot, but I'll just leave it there. Uh, and I'm sure I'll touch on a few points throughout the, the discussion. Uh, thank you so much, Sifu. I think those insights are profound in the sense that, you know, if you don't know what your data is, if you don't understand how your digital marketing is working, then it's very hard for you to create a purposeful uh, approach to your digital marketing. Um, I'd like to now switch gears and uh, go to Candy. Candy, thank you so much for being on our session today and our panel. Um, you know, we know that you work at Safaricom, one of the most progressive and disruptive brands in Kenya and Africa when it comes to digital marketing. And this is something that you've been using as a main mainstay uh, in your business for quite a few years. Uh, can you share with us what the journey has been for Safaricom coming from the early days of um, digital marketing, you know, the kind of best practices you've established? And then also from your point of view, what should we be paying attention to going forward as businesses as individuals in terms of digital marketing and also looking at the next practices uh, based on what you have seen at Safaricom? Uh, for this conversation. Um, so I think the journey uh, into digital marketing for, for us as a brand and for Safaricom has been long coming. I think first we do sell digital products uh, and services. So we are the smack in, in really understanding what a customer's journey is as they consume our products. But I think when it comes to the marketing space, so the first thing I like to, to, to establish uh, in any marketing conversation, MarTech, sometimes you can get overwhelmed by, oh my God, what does that mean? I think the first thing is to understand that ultimately, marketing is, is a core part of the business that is that exists to either increase revenue through being relevant to your customers, and that's how it links back to the business objective, or being efficient, being efficient in how you spend your money. So the journey we've been on has been, you know, leveraging those two areas where we've seen how can we leverage the technology that exists in the world that we live in now to either connect better with our customers uh, so that we're able to deliver our products and services more efficiently to them, or how can we uh, spend the money that we have more efficiently ultimately uh, delivering uh, real value. So several things have happened in the process. I'll try and, and give some practical examples. Um, one of the big uh, areas, you know, that in the journey is the, is the importance of partnerships. Um, I like to, I, I'm happy to see Mel Torta here, you know, Google as well, or in the previous session, Twitter, Facebook, all these are, are partners. And, you, and in the journey of, of, uh, of, of technology, you have to understand that you don't have to be the expert in everything. There are people who are experts in what they do in the tech. And what's important as a, as a business uh, person, as a marketing person, is to understand how can you leverage that technology to help you deliver on your marketing objectives. So a good example of a partnership that really worked for us is Elliot. I'll continue speaking about it because it's very really close to my heart. Um, that was because we were able, and the tech insight there was that came from Twitter as our partner, is the creation of an emoji, a custom emoji with that we had, we had t uh, changed um, the PESA logo to Elude, and that is how we ended up getting 12 billion impressions. So, first, very important thing in the journey is understanding the the, the 
partnerships and the power of partnerships. The second very important thing is the team and internally and making sure that we are all thinking digital first. So um, Privilege as Safaricom as a business is um, really driving digital first and data driven decision making as an important business driver. So we're doing a lot of that. We have a team internally, I think we're there as well um, uh, as um, in the industry where we have digital media buying is managed internally. So you're able to learn. So you're able to build the capability internally. And, and as a result, what happens is then now when it comes to output, and I'll talk about something like the recently launched M-Pesa app uh, that we launched last week, we're able to tap into First, you build the capability and you tap into real insights that drive tech insights that drive value. So M-Pesa app, for example, we did a launch. It was the first only digital launch um, from a cost efficiency perspective. You know, it's you know, you could have sat in a in a big hall and done, you know, the usual thing, but just being able to communicate and we actually got um, I think we on an on an average event we usually get about five thousand mentions. This time we got about twenty thousand mentions positive engagement around our launch event. The second thing with the M-Pesa app um, is really performance-driven um, marketing. So really being able to leverage things like, um, you know, you know the data that we have uh, and the insights that we have to drive downloads. So we are able, right now, I think we are, we, we, the spend that we have, we are able to deliver up to 22% uh, guaranteed return on investment. So if I put a million shillings out, I know 22% of that is going to lead to something credible. And that now starts, and that's a, again a big uh, thing going forward that we need to understand when it comes to marketing. The focus on just awareness and hope and you know, you know, high probability that people will convert uh, the, the, with data and with the digital space, you're able to be sharper in how you're able to drive that conversion and therefore deliver on your business objectives. I can go there, but I'll stop there. <laughs> so much, Candy. I think I heard everything in there. There was storytelling, there was performance campaigns, brand building. I think the whole uh, collective of different things you can do on digital. I think that's Safaricom. That's how good you guys are at this stuff. And we love those key insights. Uh, we'll now shift over to Waidera. Waidera, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, you at uh, EABL or Diageo are involved in working with some of the most loved and well-known uh, consumer brands in Kenya and globally. Um, and this means really that you have to stay connected to your consumers and your customers uh, by leveraging digital marketing, but also interfacing or converging that with our traditional marketing so that we have an integrated approach given the nature of your products. Um, so when you're connecting the dots from where we are today and going to the future at EABL, uh, from a digital marketing perspective, what do you see as the next steps? And more importantly, how do we make that convergence between traditional and digital media as well? Uh, thank you, Moses, for having me as well. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is um, just to remind marketers that we really need to be future focused. Um, there's a quote that uh, Regina Nyoguto from Google shared with me from Think with Google, and it says, solve for what matters today to be ready for what matters tomorrow. And I think the, the pandemic has really taught us that we should have been ready for tomorrow. The COVID consumer today is our future consumer. So two things we did. One, I'll start with people. Because people really are the key thing uh, any organization needs to move your strategy forward. So we uh, we had already decided before the pandemic to in-house our digital uh, marketing team, our digital agency. Um, and we did that because we realized we have a huge portfolio of brands we're sometimes not very agile or efficient in how we were doing our digital marketing. And we realized digital was going to become a key part of how we connect with consumers for various reasons. One for us in our industry, alcohol, uh, beverage, uh, we have a lot of, uh, it's very regulated. We have a lot of restrictions. We, uh, under the programming code, are subjected to watershed. So with traditional marketing, um, it, you know, we, we, it, it's not as uh, easy like we wanted it to be. So digital had become a, a big focus. So we in-housed the team um, early 2020, and this really paid off really well um, during the pandemic because now we were closer to the brand. Uh, we were really acting on social intelligence from our monitoring tools. Uh, a, a good example is um, uh, most of our beer brands are available in a, a can format, which you can consume outside of the bars. And uh, however, there was one beer brand, a very loved beer brand, uh, Balozi, and Belosi consumers are very, very particular, very loyal. And they went online and said, hey, we can't get Belosi in a can. And you know, the bars were closed. Uh, so the, you know, a lot of chat around that that we picked up. And so we went to the innovation team uh, and we said, look, there's all this chatter. What is the plan for Belosi being in a can? 
And the innovation team quickly turned around and produced uh, Balozi in, a, in the CAN format within six weeks, which was record time. And then we launched the campaign of, you know, yes, we can. And the consumers online picked that campaign and, and ran with it. Um, as much as we launched, you know, we had out of home and we had, you know, radio, they picked it up online and ran with it, which was just a really interesting uh, example of how, you know, people, tech, intelligence all came together. The second thing we did, and again, being future focused, uh, is, well, one, if we think about media at EABL, we don't think about, we don't differentiate traditional versus online. We think about connection points. So anything can be a connection point to this day, isn't it? Um, the, the trucks that ferry the product to the market could be a connection point. So we think about it very broadly. So one of the things we had been looking at last year was um, how do we connect consu with consumers who may want to uh, order dr their drinks uh, you know, at home or not necessarily go out into the, the trade. And so this in 2019, we did do a, a focus group. We did a design thinking workshop. And with that, we, we came back with a blueprint of how we want our e-commerce business to look like. And then um, we decided to test it out. So just before the pandemic hit, I remember it was the day before um, the first case was announced. Uh, so on March 15th, we launched a new product, Bailey's Delight, uh, in partnership with Jumia Party. Um, and it was the first time we're doing an, a launch of a product using e-commerce as our uh, route to the consumer. And it was a trial for us. Little did we know that over the next few months, that uh, channel will become so key for us and what we did is we religiously focused on uh, our return on ad spend. So whatever we're putting in to push our products on the different online uh, e-commerce platforms, what was it doing for us from an ROI perspective? And that's what we were using to track. So I'll stop there, Moses, unless you have any uh, follow-up questions. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, just so many insights there, you know, just understanding the fact that, you know, given the pandemic, you you had the the strategy already in place and it lets you go to market and try something really innovative and also come up with a new product in the process. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, we'll now switch gears to Chris. Chris, Karibu Sana. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Chris, for me, is uh, what I'd call a thought leader uh, in the area of, you know, digital uh, influencers and social media, you know, looking at a slightly different form of digital marketing. Uh, his Company has been at the core, the fore of this space for a number of years, and I would like to sort of understand from Chris, you know, what is your perspective around those areas, and you know, what have you been able to do, and what sort of insights have you picked up, especially during the time of the pandemic, and going forward in terms of you know leveraging social media and digital influencers as part of sort of the digital marketing mix. All right, Moses, thank you very much for having me. Um, so um, the first thing that I'd like to talk about is the fact that. Um, I arrived here from, uh, I moved here from South Africa, I think in 2008, and SA was really uh, a really experiential market, you know, where, you know, to sell, to have, when you have a digital campaign, it's not really about display. It's really, if you want to sell a car, you would build a microsite and you would involve your audience to actually build a car, you know, so it was highly experiential. So when it came to Kenya, it was a bit, a bit different, you know, so the first client we had was actually, was actually Safaricom, you know, where we actually forced them to move from just printing annual reports to actually going the digital way, you know, so things like that. And then we moved then into, then came Google and started building their affiliate network, you know, in Africa, you know, and SEO and so on. And then market, I mean, digital marketing became less and less experiential, but more technical. Then social took the lead, then the marketing, the, the pandemic happened, and then e-commerce finally picked up. You know, and now we're talking about influencing. Now we're talking about e-commerce, but it works a little bit differently in a market like, let's say, Kenya. So I'm sure that you guys have heard of um, a platform called Gigi. So instead of Jubia, for example, where I'll go order something and then it's delivered, I'll go to Gigi, connect to, a, to what you call that, to a seller, and then he sends me the stuff. I test it, and if I like it, I send the money. You know, it's a different, a different way of actually doing things, and it really works, right? So, so this is more or less where we are. One of the other things that I would like to talk about is that Africa, for some reason, what I've seen is it's a me too digital culture. For brands to actually engage into certain things, they're more convinced when there's been a guinea pig, when there's been a company that has tried it before, right? So let's say this is where we are. How do I see the future? There's so much to say, really so much to say. So I'm going to try to go as quickly as possible. The first thing that I'd like to talk about is audience profiling. I think why there are, um, 
uh, and Carol, you know, you guys are doing an incredible job. You're using technology. Um, Sipo was talking about, I mean, what tech can do right now for profiling. I think it's really great. However, there's something that I think is really missing now. You know, I think we need more data points, but more importantly, when you look at the way people run campaigns now, you see a big company um, approving a set of assets, but the assets actually work more or less the same way. They're different, you know, because it's different creative, but it works the same way. However, they don't realize that you can send, you know, I can, I can live in the same house with someone, you know, we have the same background, but we react completely differently to a piece of content. Therefore, there are people that are more factual, there are people that are, that are more emotional. For example, if Safaricom wanted to have an ad, a fiber ad, they could sell the fact that is the best, um, the best speeds that money can buy versus, for example, you know, uh, an uninterrupted connection with your loved ones. You see how it's really different, you know? So, and I think for me, this is where a lot of digital agencies are starting to understand that there's no one size fits all in terms of the approach, right? The second thing I like to talk about is content. Very important, we all know this. People look at content as something that you do, but people don't look at content as a strategy for your business. Africans have understood that, you know, distribution is maybe even more important than content. And I'm saying it again, distribution is maybe more important than content, right? So um, there's a race for numbers, right? So a lot of content creators and so on, and companies as well are trying to build the numbers, you know, because they know that um, they, they need to start thinking about what we call return on audience, you know? So not necessarily return on investment, but return on audience, because an audience is not just people that you sell things to, but basically people that you can use for market research and stuff like that as well. Um, uh, Johnson & Johnson, for example, yes, I remember Johnson & Johnson bought a, a, a platform called baby.com where they, their logo does not appear, but they use it purely, you know, for research, you know? So if they want to sell, let's say, baby oil, they can do a test there and customers don't really know, you know, so things like that. So things are shifting. The third thing I would like to talk about is influencing. Everybody knows that influencing is working now. Um, in Africa, people are starting to question influencers from an ethical point of view. So they want them to be a lot more accountable. Nano influencing is really starting to work. EABL here, I mean, Waidera is giving us a masterclass, you know, when it comes to influencing, there's no way you're on social media in Kenya, for example, and you don't see an EABL brand. It's, it's just not possible. They're doing an incredible job, right? The last thing that I would like to talk about, the, the, the thing on influencing maybe might be, how do you really choose your influencer now? Um, one of the last things I'd like to talk about is audio social, right? Very important. I don't know how many of you guys here on Clubhouse. If not, guys, you need to go. That's the future. And to happen. So a lot of Africans are starting to embrace audio social, right? And it's going to we're going to get to a point where it's it's getting a lot a lot complicated. The last thing I want to talk about is super apps, you know. And Candy really spoke about that. Safaricom, I'm so proud of you for actually launching something like this because it means a lot more. You know, it means that we can actually get a lot more data, connected data. And Vodacom in South Africa has a partnership with like 70 brands already, which is really crazy. And our MTN on the other side and its telcos is building a community first with Ayoba and so on. So very soon, we're going to get to the holy grail in Africa, which is personalization. I know I spoke a lot, but I need to end up. Thank you so much, Chris. That was really insightful. And I love the way that you also delved into the topic of nano influencers. That is not just about, you know, having an influencer like Cristiano Ronaldo, who I think has over 100 million followers, but sometimes the influencer is somebody with just a thousand followers, but a thousand people who completely believe every word they say. And when you recommend a product or a solution, they actually make a decision around that. I do realize we're a little bit pressed for time. I don't think we have very much. So I'm going to give each one of you an opportunity, a maximum of one and a half minutes, just to give us any parting shot short, any last insight, anything uh, that you think would really bring value to our audience. And we'll start off with you, Sifo, uh, your parting shot. Maybe just give us a point of view that we think would be useful for the audience. Perfect. Time flies, eh? But uh, I think on my end, dig digital transformation is here to stay. It is important that we invest both our time and money in becoming more tech savvy in our roles in digital spend. But understanding digital tools and how they can help you find the right performance matrix to truly report on return on investment or return on audience, as uh, Chris has mentioned. And this will also inform how strategically do you target your audience. So I think a complete understanding, a complete awareness, um, and as marketing and communication professionals, we just need to embrace smart tech and adopt a customer-centric approach through removing silos and harnessing data. 
there is so much information out there, Moses, and information that can really inform a lot of internal strategies. And as we have seen with Safari Chrome EABL, these are good examples. Um, and I think we need to draw on those insights and also just have knowledge shares such as this. So that's just my uh, insight um, on that note. Well, uh, well, Candy, okay. once again, there's so much you packed into your unpacking of what Safaricom is doing. But is there anything else, anything, any additional nuggets you can give us so that we can all try and aspire to be as successful as Safaricom in digital marketing? I think, you know, when I reflect on uh, on me as an individual, as a marketer, I think this is it's a good time to be in marketing. And I think the power of being a marketing professional now, I mean, it's an amazing place to be. It's a good time to be alive. And uh, when I think about that, I think that what I would like to just challenge everyone, especially in marketing in the space of technologies, to don't be afraid. Stay curious. You know, when you hear AI, don't panic. You know, AI just means it's, it's learning and leveraging technology so you're able to learn what the customer needs. As long as you're clear about your customer insight, technology is here to help us do better marketing, you know, do more exciting marketing, reach more people, do it more efficiently, and therefore grow our businesses. So stay curious. Keep learning and let's 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 do amazing. I'm I'm very passionate about um, international recognition. I mean, Safaricom just got shortlisted for two Cannes Awards for Bonga for Good, and I really want more of us in the industry to be playing at that level. And digital gives us that opportunity. Technology gives us an opportunity to be able to show up at the at Cannes with innovative solutions. So that's my call to action. My challenge to all of us is, you know, let's 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 be world class. Let's learn and let's drive real, you know amazing marketing from Africa. It's our time. It really is our time. Thank you very much. Joseph. Thank you so much. Candid, again, just to reiterate that point, I think for everyone who's here who's a marketer, that I think acquiring the skills and actually becoming practitioners in digital is absolutely essential. Our audiences are now consuming more than ever on digital platforms. So we need to be competent and capable and comfortable with these uh, marketing technologies that we're discussing today. Uh, Waidera, I'd love to also hear your parting shot, your points of view, um, any last nuggets that you think would be useful for our audience. Uh, Kendi actually uh, used my line. I was going to say, stay stay hungry. What does Steve Jobs say? Stay hungry, stay um, foolish. focused. Stay foolish, that one. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Steve Jobs, Great absolutely. Great Great you know, <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, two things I want to say. One, as much as we are in this uh, information age and technology is very critical, as marketers, we need to always remember to... Uh, to make sure we're keeping in line the, the, the four basic marketing principles in everything we do, which is price, product, promotion, and place. I see some marketers who only focus on promotion, but really you need to be the general manager of your brand and not just a brand custodian. And then use marketing technology to help deliver ROI. Uh, later on today, there'll be a case study that uh, from Diageo, from EABL, where we show you how we've used technology. We have a tool called Marketing Catalyst to help us uh, measure ROI uh, and help, it really helps us with our marketing effectiveness. And that tool and is actually used from a strategic point of view for the decision to make, uh, this, the, for the business to make decisions on whether to increase or decrease marketing budgets for our various brands. The second thing I wanted to say, um, you know, as, as Africans, uh, you know, we're mobile first or in a lot of places mobile only, but I think it's a huge advantage for us because we're just a click away from the consumer, even at the point of purchase. So the focus then should be how do we effectively reach that consumer uh, at, you know, at the right type of frequency and just really be impactful. So let's remember that all the time. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And again, I'll just encourage everyone to stay on the on the, on the on the summit. Please stay logged in and we're gonna see this fantastic case study where we can see how the best of the best are doing the digital marketing in Africa. So stay tuned for that and we'll see how that goes. And then lastly, Chris, uh, again, what, what last nuggets do you think, uh, you think from your perspective and your areas of expertise uh, would bring value to our audience today? Uh, thank you very much, Moses. So, um, Two things. The first thing I'll talk about is the fact that for me, the future of marketing is experience. That's just the way it is. You know, it's always been the case, you know, for me, it's marketing is the experience. And the other thing that I'd like to talk about, and maybe that can challenge us all, you know, how about we start thinking about digital marketing differently? So is there even such a thing as digital marketing? You know, for me, digital is not a channel. You know, there's marketing and digital is just basically an enabler, a new way of doing things and, you know, a new way of actually 
um, thinking and addressing certain problems, you know? So for me, this is how, you know, there's no such thing really as digital marketing. There's marketing and then digital is just something that you use, you know, to make sure that the marketing works. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. And I think your point kind of uh, cuts across with what uh, White Dara was saying earlier, that the fundamentals of marketing remain the same. And we must sort of see how to bring digital into that context and take advantage of how we can then converge everything across the different platforms. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are delighted uh, with our panel. Thank you so much to our great panel for giving us all those wonderful insights across the organizations. And most importantly, we, we hope that you will stay on the summit today and we look forward to engaging you going forward. Thank you.